Hello and welcome! It's session number 59 of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Hi, everyone! Hello. Hello! 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 We are starting without Dennis, who will join us soon. Uh, so we actually have a full house, you just can't tell for now. But here's the table, and I just want to welcome, welcome you guys back! I hope you've had a good week. Uh, we're all in various states and shapes today, but we're, <laughs> we're gonna try to make this work and have fun and not die in the process. I am uh, quite literally in a different state. And we're making it work. I appreciate it again um, that you actually like brought things and you set up so that you could play. Um, so yeah, thank Didn't you. Didn't want to miss it. And speaking of Jory, the summary. Da -da 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 -da, it's up to you. It's, oh man, it's it's on me. It's a good thing I have this. I have my homework done. You did your <laughs> homework. Allow me to put on did... homework music. Here we go. This is some great homework music. Actually, it's it's pretty good. Um, so last time on Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. We opened up by putting on our tinfoil hats and thoroughly digging into every possible connection <laughs> that could have led us to our current point in the game. This resulted in a tangle of connected points that may or may not have blown the whole campaign wide open. And yes, the recap was important enough to include in this recap. Getting back <laughs> to our party, after leaving our mood adventures behind us, we found ourselves standing precisely where we had been before embarking to space, question mark. After getting our bearings, we discovered that not only were we able to speak Ludari and Draconic, we'd also been gained, uh, given the ability to speak Krell. And we then proceeded to do absolutely nothing with this revelation. <laughs> um, that was until Pontifex was approached by a child with what looked to be a spellbook. After determining that the, that the type of magic was written it was something very foreign to him, he gave the child a knife. We spent one final <laughs> night camped under the remains of Stilling Dread, uh, Pontifex and Freda um, were able to decode one, one, just one spell from the Dustwept Grimoire uh, we had taken from He Slithers Through Dust. And when morning came, we said our farewells to Devamia and Freda, who are escorting the Krelko back to Narashk and continued their own research there. Uh, Squeak set off on his own errand to pick up some sky blue sand while the rest of us headed south, uh, southeast towards the potential location of Damuel's staff. And then we walked for like four days. Uh, Pip managed to roulette his way into learning how to summon horses on only a second try, and then managed to find out every type of horse. He found all the horses. <laughs> uh, thanks to some navigational cooperation between Virion and Brooke, we were able to make excellent progress, passing from the desert into a lush jungle. Not far from our travels, we encountered the sound of a whistling bird that struck a familiar chord with most of the party. After following Pip as he went dashing into the jungle, we were met by Glimmer, a very large merchant bird, We'll trade shiny things for other shiny things. And for the low, low price of some shiny robes, a bell, and Pip Star Boba, we're able to acquire a multi purpose wand, some magic boots, and a magical paper mask, and a different cool rock. And Pip also has a knife now. So the, yep. the subtitle of this campaign is just Child as a Knife again. We gave the child a knife. That's, that was the session. That. Well, thank you yep. for the summary. Good job. If I had a nickel for every time a child got a knife last session. Uh, let's see. Child. Was... Child with knife inspiration. That was ten times shorter than my summary, and I thank you for it so much. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you. Do Someone's you have... gotta set lower the bar. Hold on, do you still have zero <laughs> natural ones? You did a summary? <laughs> it, uh, now that you've said that, I'm going to roll like five of them today. <laughs> I do feel like when when Joey rolls, it's pretty frequently with advantage. I think Virian gets a lot of advantage sources. Flashbacks to Vigil. Okay. So, um, let me bring the map back just to get the feel for the situation, uh, as you guys 
have just seen Glimmer fly off. Uh, and you are roughly in this spot. Um, jungle music. <laughs> Okay, I believe this was your fourth day of travel, which has been progressing um, just really smoothly thanks to Pip's horses. Uh, the entire collection of all colors and sizes. Uh, let me do some quick math. One, two, three. Da, 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 da. Got it. Food and water have not been uh, an issue thus far, thanks to Pontifex's magic. Uh, making one of the major obstacles mm -hmm. to traveling uh, um, uh, across Hildaria uh, be an afterthought at this point. Every night you sleep in your tower, uh, always leaving behind no trace of your passage once uh, it is dismissed in the morning. Um, thus making uh, this trip a much simpler one compared to your first few treks. Uh, across Lidari, despite it not even being on uh, on an actual road. Uh, with Glimmer gone, before we resume uh, your journey, um, Pip, mm -hmm. you may roll a survival check. <gasps> okay. This is it. This is it. 16... Okay. Next, roll a survival check with Pip's stat uh, Pip with Squeak's stat block. Okay. Let me find that. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Fifteen. Need my dice. Okay. Remind me who. Or, or, or uh, I mean, uh, if, if things are going to change or not, just let me know who's leading from now on for the rest of the journey. Uh, I think Tekka could be leading. Okay. Um, uh, give... And in case it becomes relevant, I think Tekka would probably try to help Pip look for a baby bird or like a bird's nest like while we're traveling. If it becomes relevant. Okay. The snake too? Uh, what did you say? Uh, also the venomous snake, because he's looking for two things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looking for both that. Okay. Uh, Pip, give me another survival roll then. Uh, and then okay. I'll take one from Tekka as well. And uh, uh, I, from Tekka I need two of them. Okay. Funny. Nice. Thanks, Tekka. <laughs> That's a decent first one. Uh, that ignore that one. Mm. Uh, okay. <laughs> Wait, I. Okay. That's not a great second one, but oh well. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put away this map now. And instead... Oop. Ooh. <gasps> okay. What? Let's this. It's beautiful. Nice screen. So, um... What color? As you resume your journey, this vibrant tapestry of nature unfurls before your eyes. Massive trees tower above you, their branches stretching out like ancient, grasping fingers. The canopy overhead casts dappled shadows, allowing streaks of sunlight to dance on the, on the forest floor. Vines hang down from the lofty branches, some thick and sturdy, others slender and delicate, sometimes adorned with clusters of colorful flowers. Enormous leaves large enough for you to seek refuge under provide shelter from both the sun and the occasional rain showers. Breathe in the smell of flowers and it's almost intoxicating. Pekka and Pip teaming up to search um, for the remaining ingredients. You keep your eyes open and you're listening. 
and the jungle, alive with movement and sounds, um, makes it difficult to find any one specific thing, but as birds of every color flit through the branches and sing songs that accompany you on your journey, you're paying attention to these chirps until you hear these higher pitched ones just constant chirp 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 small birds that are hungry and calling for their mom you stop this is on your um on the day after you met glimmer and you look up in the trees above and after everybody else comes to a stop and you they give you some time to look that can you begin climbing on the trees pip you're also a, a, Pretty good at this, but both of you, uh, having grown up uh, um, doing this quite a lot, you eventually locate a nest. The birds inside, there are three of them, and they're just the word tiny uh, is not sufficient here. You could fit all three of them in the palm of your hand, Pip. They're so, so small, mm -hmm. their feathers barely showing. Um, their colors, all three of them are this very deep red color, uh, very bright, especially compared to the, to the nest built out of, you know, just normal twigs. Um, very, very visible, at least from above. Um, Pip gives Tech a nod, and then he's going to scurry back down real quickly, and... Um, just start digging in the ground for some worms. Uh, I'm just going to go off of your like survival check that you've already rolled. Um, in any jungle as lush as this one, where the terrain is the complete opposite of dustfall, it's almost uh, constantly wet everywhere you go. Um, you sink your hands in the ground and you pull them up and it's just full of worms. Nice. Uh, Pip will just dip them into the water a little bit just to get all the dirt off of them. And then we'll climb back up the tree to the nest. Uh, and he's going to hand Tekka a few worms. And Pip himself is going to say to the baby birds, Cheep, 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 cheep. Hey, I'll trade you worms for one of your feathers. I've just been struck by the idea of like, so animals never learn to talk, right? But like, so if you're if you're talking with animals, <laughs> is there ever an age where they it's, it's, <laughs> I totally can talk? I'm or? using bird baby talk. Well, <laughs> <laughs> <One> little birdies, <laughs> you want some worms? Um, you're just gonna feel a little pinch. <laughs> Do the worms I'm... understand what you're saying? <laughs> oh, 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 oh no! It's <laughs> a different dialect entirely. Oh, I see. Okay, it's not universal animal speak. Yeah, it's, I it's wiggle it. Animal. <laughs> the worms. So you're purposely speaking in a different language, so they don't yes. know that you're offering their lives as the, tribute. The exactly. worms are freaking out nice. because okay. they're like 20 feet above the ground right now. Uh, even if they do not understand what you're currently saying, <laughs> and, and you and you can hear them uh, just being very confused <laughs> by the way they're being handled. Um, it, the baby birds are. I'm I'm going to say that they are too young to understand the concept of trading, but they're just excited to see the food. Uh, you figure you have the closest thing you could ever get to consent. What well, great while they're. While they're distracted with the worms, I'm just gonna pluck one of the feathers off. Mm hmm. It's the smallest thing. You have to, like, really pinch your fingernails together to pluck it. And, and then, because it's so small, it immediately slips from your grasp, and you have to, like, try to catch it a couple of times until finally you've gotten it in between your hands. Um, Squeak isn't present currently. Did, mm -hmm. did he take the bag with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thought so, because. I'm pretty sure he actually can't give it to you. Um, so you, you find a little place to put it. Uh, maybe in between pages of a book or if you have an empty bottle. 
Uh, Summer just story. Yeah, I'm just like making Orm hold it. <laughs> you put it in between the pages of Orm, yeah. uh, who seems quite excited at the idea of having uh, his own little feather. On purpose. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> purpose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pip, when when climbing back down, gives gives Tech a big uh, pat on the sh the shoulder and two thumbs up. <laughs> Clever, one step closer. Pip just holds up uh, two fingers and nods. And then so, gets back close to the ground again, dagger out, mask on, and just starts <laughs> prowling around for the last remaining thing he can try and find. <laughs> uh, he's putting on a mask? <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is a different day. Roll a d6. Okay. Uh... One. One. Um, today, when you put on the mask for the first time in the morning, um, the it shifts into this face with like a strong jawline and a fine nose, a bit of like this pleasant and confident smile uh, and and thick eyebrows. Um, you're feeling pretty heroic while while wearing it. <laughs> You feel like you saved the day with a sense with of bravado, a, yeah. knife high in the air. <laughs> you feel like you saved the forward. day when you fed the birds. Yeah. Um. Just checking for things real quick. Where's Pip? There's Pip. Lots of paper things going on. Sorry, one moment. You're scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. You're delving I, I should have... deep into the annals of my Sorry, notes. I should, I should have done this before. <laughs> beforehand. Because <laughs> uh, I knew it was going to happen anyway. What? What's going to happen? Um, don't worry about it. Nice. I need to move my dice roller. Okay. When the DM says not to worry about it, that's when you should worry. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and done. Okay. Two days after your encounter with Glimmer, um, on the night leading to the dawn of this particular day, um, you have. A particularly nice dream, Pip. Uh, one that really sticks with you uh, when you wake up. One of those dreams that, like, uh, you remember it really vividly. Uh, all those details remain with you even hours after you have woken up. Um, it was all about the jungle, but it... Uh, um, it was different from how it currently is. Um, it's one of those things that you would find difficult to put into words, but it was even more beautiful. It felt like the jungle was older and full of stories to tell you. Every tree just talking about all the things it has seen. Uh, every blade of grass uh, telling you about its day. Every animal just chatting with one another. None of them hunting uh, each other. Just living in peace and harmony. Um, you're feeling lucky on this particular day. And perhaps that's why on perhaps half an hour... After you set off again, you step on a snake. What? Is that okay? I go, <laughs> Are you uh, alive? <laughs> and the snake is a little upset. 
Um, it, uh, you're not particularly heavy, and you really just stepped on it with, like, the tips of your toes. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the, the snake hisses and just warns you to stay back, that it, it could kill you with one bite. And you can tell that it's, like, exaggerating a little bit. But there is hey. a little bit of truth. Hey, 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 listen. I'm really sorry for stepping on you. I... I want to make it up to you, but there's something I need first, and this is going to sound very threatening, alright? But, I need one of your fangs. <laughs> I can give you, I can give you a rat in return. How would you like a rat? Maybe, I'll give you three. I'll give you three rats if you give me one of your fangs. I'll take it either way, but this way you get rats. <laughs> Roll an intimidation check. using inspiration <laughs> <laughs> catapult spiration here we go <laughs> natural 20 27 wow. oh what? my god all right give me that catapult the silver tongue yeah <laughs> okay so um i'm going to be to be completely honest the snake is not okay with giving up a fang, no matter how you sugarcoat it and what you offer, but um, it seems to accept that it just can't really escape from you. Um, you did just step on it, uh, and it knows it can't outrun you. Uh, and at the very least, it takes comfort in taking something in return. Um, so the snake promises not to bite you, but does ask to like not hurt it as much as possible. Oh. Um, Pip grabs it by, like, as close to the head as possible, and then just carries it around like a, like a little rope. The rest <laughs> of the party sees this to... child picking up a visibly venomous snake. Like, it's one of those with the really bright markings, really bright colors. It, it has stripes on its back. Uh, and it's just dangling from its from its end. No, Do you I'm need not help? Uh, uh, yeah, Pip like holds it up to. Uh, he's looking one by one at the different people around him and holds it up to the professor, and Pip holds up a knife. And gestures, <laughs> gestures uh, towards it, towards the snake's face, and then just sort of gives a frowny face. <laughs> what an image! Oh my god! Today's session is all animal abuse. <laughs> Matt, are you with us? What? Ah. Pip, oh. Pip makes a Pip makes like a magical little gesture over the snake and then flashes his hand open and close towards Pontifex. Uh, he points Pontifex. at Brooks. He points at Brooks hand where the scars are. Oh, Brooke! Oh, Brooke! <laughs> Speak of the devil. Bonifex will cast a light cantrip in his own hand and then open and close his hand as if to flash the light back at Pip. Pip shakes no. Pip shakes no. <laughs> shakes his head furiously no. He points at Brooke's hand where the scars are and then points at the snake. <laughs> the snake's face. Are you saying this snake hurt Brooke? <laughs> Pip shakes no. No, no, no. What are you saying, boy? Use your words. <laughs> Pip. Uh. <laughs> Pip puts the knife against his own arm and gestures cutting it. Well, and don't then, do that. That's And stupid. then gestures. He puts his hand on it and then removes it 
and then gives you a, a wide-eyed expression like, Whoa! <laughs> you want to remove Brooke's hand with this snake? <laughs> Look, if anyone else understands what he's trying to say, please help. I, I think he needs a, uh, some dentistry. Uh. And a theologist and a magician, not a, a charades person. I don't know the term for a professional charadesman. <laughs> I think it's a mime. I, uh, there you go. I'm a professor, a theologist, and a wizard, not a mime. Thank you for Hip. the backup. Pip is going to use disguise self to appear just like himself, but bleeding. <laughs> and then, <laughs> bleeding from the arm. And then is going to take a hand, put it over the blood spot, and then stop using Disguise Self, remove his hand, and the blood's gone. The cut's gone. You want me to heal something? Pip, Pip goes, uh, just jumps up and down. You want to, you want to fly? No! <laughs> <laughs> he shakes his head no. And, and... Healing, okay, heal. You want me to heal Brooke? It shakes his head no. Points at the snake. He wants you, you to want me to heal he the snake. Good. Hit he nods and then cuts the snake's fang off. <laughs> <laughs> what? what are you doing? <laughs> I can regrow limbs, that's a big spell. Okay. You, you have a very displeased snake. Uh, to demonstrate how wrong this is, uh, I'm I'm then going to cast. Uh, I don't I don't have cure wounds. I'm gonna cast healing word. Uh, you got this, champ, <laughs> and I'm gonna heal the snake. Uh, so while the yeah. fang does not uh, grow back, uh, it does stop the pain. It does stop the bleeding. Um, the Mouth immediately just scars over, even if you had a one. Like that's kill the hell out of that snake. Yeah, yeah I want to know. I want Pip to know that I tried. <clears throat> um, yeah. Gave it the best words of affirmation that has ever not understood. The, the snake is no longer like writhing in obvious pain. Okay. Pip says. I'm really, really sorry I had to do that. You're not gonna understand if I explained it to you. So I'm just gonna give you a bunch of rats and then we're cool, yeah? <laughs> Great. He <laughs> puts it down. <laughs> and he takes off his hat of vermin and just starts yanking rats out of it <laughs> and tosses it towards the, the snake. <laughs> Go get him. <laughs> Sorry I removed half of the only appendage that you even have, but I'm going to give you burgers until we're cool. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh my god. Alright. Yep, the snake starts chasing after the mice. Uh, you toss them, like, almost into its open mouth. Um, one, of, one of the rats manages to get away, but the others are, are quickly devoured. <laughs> you got yourself a fang. <laughs> but at what cost? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Pip, Pip uh, is just going to check in with Squeak real quick telepathically and just say, You got the sand yet? We got everything else. Um, you look through his uh, through his eyes. Uh, he's flying through a terrain not too dissimilar from yours, but it's um, much more sparse kind of jungle, like the transition between jungle and forest, I suppose. Uh, <clears throat> it's... Um, I, what sensor do you, do you have through Squeak? Is it hearing and sight and that's it? I believe so. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say that, but it's a different weather where Squeak is compared to you. It's currently raining on him. 
uh, which he himself seems to appreciate. Uh, but he is still not within sight of a of the sea. I'm getting there, man. Chill out. Mm. Okay, hurry up. <laughs> it pops back. Uh, then it's all you missed was Pip's up. adventures. Okay, okay. Two thumbs up and then just holds up one finger. And, um... um what is it? Yeah, while while we're here, uh, Tekka is running low on rations, so we'll definitely take the moment to try to look for anything that could be considered food. Now, I don't mean I... to repeat myself, but I will have to ask for another survival check. Yeah, that's fine. Can I also help look for food? Yeah, absolutely. I mentioned earlier, you guys aren't currently consuming rations because Pontifex is making food. Um, mm hmm but, you know, that won't always be an option. Uh, are you both rolling or just uh, Sid with advantage? Sid, you can. Okay, I'll roll another. Not a great choice, no! <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's... Oh, there might be... Yeah, I was in my background occasionally. <laughs> Just pretend that they're part of the, uh, the jungle it's noises. Heracles. Um, while the surroundings are just full of food, uh, at least of fruits and mushrooms, it's a little bit harder to tell what is edible. The vegetation is so different from anything you're used to, Tekka. Like, the difference between this jungle and the one where you uh, first met the one who stares is um, just very drastic. And you recognize occasionally some animals you have seen previously, some flowers you have seen previously, but uh, um, the you collect perhaps enough food for, um, for just two days that you're sure is not going to hurt you. Uh, and you decided to, to give up on everything else that you're iffy on. So, two days worth of rations. Alrighty. And you do this as uh, um, you're traveling. Uh, you're taking the lead again on the this... Uh, um, uh, Dennis, this is the second day after meeting Glimmer again. Mm -hmm. Um... With Tekka indeed taking the lead, but every once in a while wandering off whenever he spots something that uh, um, he wants to decide if it's edible. Uh, everyone, uh, taking frequent rests whenever Tekka spots a good uh, place where he seems to decide that, yeah, he should lay down right there, right now. Now's the time for a nap. Um, birds are singing all around you. There's there's Ugrens swinging effortlessly from tree to tree, uh, kind of trailing you, watching you with their mischievous eyes. Uh, you see butterflies <clears throat> with iridescent wings uh, floating delicately on the warm breeze, and they disappear <clears throat> at the slightest noise. Uh, and then, as you're admiring the beauty of this place and gathering food and allowing yourself to relax just a little, Tekka disappears into the ground. Right before everyone's everyone's eyes. Roll oh. initiative. Oh. <laughs> what? He's Bye -bye. been short. Rest in peace, Tekka. Ah. It's been a nice ride. He's gone again. The good news <laughs> is we don't have to bury him. him. We we just got you back. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's Phoenix. Oh, that's the name? Uh -huh. I love it. I didn't have time to set up like a 3D map, so you're getting a background one. That's fine. Blue. It's lovely. <laughs> I was like, what? 
I, I, what's happening? And it's because I had the map upside down. <laughs> Why do these trees have trunks sprouting out of them? <laughs> uh, now it makes sense. I simply had to ask that question to realize what was wrong, but I still had to ask the question. Sometimes you just gotta. Hello. Oh. Oh. He's on my head. Oh. 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 <laughs> I can't move. <laughs> oh. He has been napping this whole time and now he's awake. And oh. he wants to be a shoulder cat. And, um... Oh, gosh. He really likes to lick the inside of my nostrils. <laughs> oh, ew. <laughs> yep. He just... I keep trying How to stop How are the him. other cats getting along with Phoenix? Um... So, the smallest one, Maya, is terrified of this really tiny kitten. Oh. Uh, you guys are roughly in uh, this spot. Uh, Tekka has disappeared uh, here. Uh, so, like, any of these squares. And you're right behind that. Um, Bourgeois has started to actually, like, smell him out and interact with him, and then Pumpkin, Pumpkin is so annoyed that there is another cat around. I'm just buying myself time while I... ...spray this. Oops. You can keep talking about your cats, it's okay. <laughs> uh, that's a good question, let me again. check. Right now it's a no horses moment. Okay. Uh, you've been summoning them on like stretches where whenever the jungle was clearer. Uh, and this was a moment where like it was actually opening up a little bit and you were starting to consider uh, maybe bringing them back. Uh, and then this happened. And I just... <clears throat> How do I change my max here. HP again? Do you see where it says max, max 2, max 3? Yeah. And you click the arrow on the first max. That should be the help. Thank you. Whoa. Whoa. Wait, how much do you have, bro? <laughs> I am invincible now. Where'd all that come from? <laughs> you just added like 24 hit points. <laughs> I have gained a lot of leveling up. Wow, you really did. <laughs> uh, I'm missing someone. Oh, it's Pontifex. Oh, I forgot to say... ...thing. I'm zoned. Uh... I did the same thing until... Dennis or something. Okay. Help! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, one, two, three. All right. So, uh, as I said, <clears throat> Tekka pretty much disappears before your eyes. Um, you blink and he's gone. Uh, you, you're just looking directly ahead and uh, um, the ground has opened up to swallow him. Uh, Tekka, you're falling. Uh, it's a ten uh, feet <clears throat> uh, which results in just three points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, monk. <clears throat> ah, monk. Oh, is there monk monk stuff going on? I believe so. Give me one second. Um... <laughs> of all people. Yes, yeah, slow fall as a reaction, so no damage. <laughs> okay. 
then never mind. Um, do you fall prone or do you also like catch yourself? Hmm. Yeah, how how would Tekka react? Um I wonder like maybe like he clutched this to one of the sides if that like tried to like slow his fall by doing that. Ah, uh -huh, makes that sense. Make sense. Yeah. Let's just go with that. Uh oh damn, I have snapping off. Yeah bloop. Oh no. I did the wrong thing. <laughs> Okay, good enough. Uh, I'm just going to set you like this, and um, as the rest of you just said, just come to a sudden stop uh, and look down to see that the, uh, the, the ground has indeed just decided to swallow up Tekka out of nowhere. Uh, you, you hear the soft sound of him sliding uh, uh, down the, the sides of this very rectangular-shaped hole. Um, and instead of hearing like him hit the ground, it's just a very gentle thud as he lands on his feet. Um, the the sound of the ground opening up was a metallic one. You heard the sound of metal slamming against metal, wood against wood. Um, a sort of like really big trapdoor of sorts has opened up. Uh, and with that noise, <clears throat> or rather, sorry... That noise is followed by uh, the sound of far away uh, metal gears uh, just turning and grinding together. Uh, and in the in what little sunlight manages to filter through the leaves, uh, you see a, a machine, a large feline creature, running in your direction. Oh... It's not like Tao's. So it's, we're gonna do bloop. It's pad. One? Okay. Whatever. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, it's running, but I guess we have uh, uh, Baruki going first and literally everybody <laughs> before it. <laughs> um, perhaps oh. because of its shining metal body, uh, you just see it coming from quite a distance as it just glimmers while it runs your way. Okay. The rest can take care of Tekka. <laughs> Takes a 30 feet. Holds a... Uh, action to use my sword once it comes in range. Okay. Getting ready to slash as soon as you... It's... Uh within the uh, um, reach of your arms. Anything else? Mm-mm. Hey, okay, then Pip. Okay. Uh, Pip's going to first come up here <clears throat> and will use his telekinetic shove to try and pull Tekka back up. Uh, you do not have to resist this, Tekka. <laughs> Yeah, would Tekka have seen Pip use this before? Several times. Okay, yeah, that would not exist. You just feel yourself being pulled up by uh, nothing, really. <laughs> Giving you a boost up. Um, Pip will sort of step over to the side. And... Hmm... Hmm. Mm hmm. Was that your bonus action? Hmm. That was my bonus action, yeah. I've got a couple of options. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to try. Meanwhile, I'm just sharing no, a picture of Phoenix. Oh, 
I'm going to just come up here and use the dodge action for right now. Okay. Um, oh, too far. sorry. Should have said. Uh, everything that isn't like this uh, part uh, of the jungle, um, that it, it, it feels like it's slightly... Um, I should have described this. Uh, there, you have just reached a part of the jungle that feels like it's been walked on a lot. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, uh, traffic in some way or another, uh, and the the underbrush has been like just visibly cut a while back. I'm getting clawed. <clears throat> oh. uh, so everything here is just it's accessible. It's just difficult terrain. Uh, so keep that in mind as you move through it. Otherwise, where it's like dirt road, um, you can move freely. Gotcha. Also, Tekka is like out of the hole, so here. Yeah. All right, I'm moving on to Virion. All right, so Tekka's out of the hole. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, <laughs> kitty. Um, <laughs> It's I'm not. It's not the like, kitty that's coming at you. I, I mean. I sure. Uh, can we change that? <laughs> no. I'm just... uh, <laughs> uh, He's prowling. So, uh, Varian's just going to draw, take out her shields, and draw a gun. And bonus action, I'm going to use <laughs> the blessing of the shattered wolf and just poof forward thirty feet. Oof. If I can grab. Maybe not 30 feet. We want to go here. So 25 feet ish. Less okay. than 30. And uh, then we're going to shoot him. Fifteen. Hit. Fifteen hits. All right. How much damage does this thing do again? It's been a while. Let's see. Uh, D10. Uh, yes. Oh, is it as wobbling? It's wobbling. It's vibrating. It's vibrating. It's vibrating. Okay. <clears throat> There we go. Okay, what type of damage is it? Uh, piercing. Okay. I believe. I didn't check. Yeah, piercing. Right! Um, you... Your, your gun. Boom! Uh, it feels like every... Like, well, you see it and you hear it. Just every bird in the area takes flight. Um... Uh, the the chirping all around you is suddenly silenced, uh, and uh, the you hear the sound of the bullet just hitting metal and making a clean hole right through one of its legs. Nice. It slows down a little bit, but and begins to limp a little, but keeps charging. And we're just going to uh, stand the ground, shield ready, and that's my turn. Okay, moving on to Pontifex. Uh, okay, yeah, I... Uh, I'm going to try to... This is a, a little... Uh, I'm not entirely sure the professor got about it, but I would like to try to use um, my telepathy, just like my innate ability to speak to creatures telepathically, uh, as long as we share a language. Uh, can I try to communicate with this thing to see if it understands... Uh, uh, Plarn and Draconic. Mm. Basically trying to see if one, does this thing have <clears throat> thoughts, and two... Or not Plarnin, uh, Ladarian Draconic, that's what I meant. Right, right. Um... I am going to tell you... That... Uh, as you... You open your mind and your senses, and you try to, like, not see with your eyes uh, this approaching uh, machine, but just to feel it. Um, there is nothing there. No conscious mind that you can touch. No languages that can be spoken between the two of you. Oh. Okay. 
than the professor after a very brief uh, assertion that this thing is stupid. Uh, so <laughs> he's going to melt its brain. Uh, and I'm going to use my new uh, my new ability, uh, Psychic Lance. Uh, this needs to make a intelligence saving throw. Uh, it has no relevance on what its intelligence score is. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything other than a creature. Okay. Intelligence saving throw? Yeah, intelligence Ooh. save. Uh, DC 16. I have a natural 20. Um. Well, <laughs> that'll do it. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to enjoy it while it lasts. Just a little It taste. takes half damage. This minute. <laughs> the professor just figures that, like, because it doesn't have a mind. Oh, holy crap. Uh, this It's well, only okay. half of that, though, so 12. But yeah, he. Uh, I think he. In the way that he's done the the mind whip and stuff before, uh, it's not necessarily visible. But I feel like, uh, like maybe there is like a, a warping through space, like you know, Mass Effect biotic style. I think that's cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's like a little bit of a warping thing uh, as he beams it at this creature, uh, and just it's bend it's time too and space smart. casually. Yeah, you know, just mind. Hey, I, I just learned how to do this new thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Anything else from from Pontifex? Uh, yeah. Then he's going to uh, move at maximum <laughs> and move twenty feet right here. Okay, that brings us to Teka. Teka, you have been uh, extracted from the hole. Yeah. Uh, what I think Teka will do is uh, climb one of the nearby trees and try to look for other mechanisms, like anything that would like try to attack any of us or be a danger to any of us. So is there like a nearby tall tree that would give like a decent vantage point? Um, yeah, whatever you see on the map, I'm going to say that this, this is a tree, these are trees, uh, this whole thing. Okay. Uh, Tech is going to take a gamble on this one. <clears throat> Okay, and you're climbing it? Yeah, climbing it and then trying to look for like other traps or mechanisms from this viewpoint. All right. Uh, let's make that... Uh, uh, since you're doing this from a distance, it was going to be a perception check. Yep, that's okay. Let's see what we do. Seventeen. Okay, seventeen. <clears throat> the trap you fell in. Um, yeah, you were a little distracted, but it was also just really well hidden. And if there are others like it in this area, you're not seeing them. But you are seeing something else made of metal. Um, and you stare at it, and then something else catches your eye and you turn. And then something else catches your eye and you turn again. Uh, you see more of these creatures, all of them uh, quickly approaching your position. It's one. Ah. There's one here. Oops. This spot, and there's one here. Uh oh. This is fine. 17. Yep. Uh, that would uh, yeah, be it Teka for Deco. Yeah, Deco will just, like, call out to the group. More are approaching! Watch your sides. Uh, Tis doesn't go yet. Next round. Uh... And this one keeps charging. Um, <clears throat> Brooke, has, uh, Brooke stood, um, like, came forward right away. Uh, yeah. Virion was uh, followed shortly after, and Tega kind of just sprinted behind them. Um, but this machine just keeps charging straight forward. Um, so it's now within your reach, Brooke, as it's, it's leaping uh, 
and ready to just tear your face off. Also, Can just I... preemptively, um, gonna protection that one, so first attack's at disadvantage. Okay. So first, Brook, you can attack with your reaction. 27 hits. Woo! Decent. Max damage. Wow. Is with the extra plus four from Burian? Or no? Wait, no, it isn't. Ah, uh, extra plus four. It's a, <clears throat> it's a plus four damage or plus four for the hit? Plus four damage. Ooh. Got it. Everyone's in 25 mm -hmm. feet. And, uh, um... This is slashing damage. Uh... Yeah. Is it magical? No. Okay. So, I will be halving it. So I have to redo my math, but... <laughs> um, this metal just seems pretty resistant to being opened up by the, by the edge of your blade. You can feel that, like, your... It's more like you're hitting it with a bat rather than with a with a sharp sword. Um, so you you manage to make a dent rather than a hole like Varian did. Uh, still quite uh, the blow. Uh, let me calculate. So that's 19 in half, which is rounded down to 9. And then this m mechanical uh, panther-like thing is on you. A disadvantage because of Virion, so that's a 13 to hit Brook. Nope. All right. Um, with the same motion that you just did, lowering your arms to hit this thing with your weapon, <clears throat> when your sword kind of catches onto the metal and doesn't manage to, to cut it, you instead just keep on, uh, you continue your movement and you essentially fling <clears throat> the, the machine directly beside you. Uh, that's the situation. And then it's your turn again. Ooh, all right. Oh, Bonus action. Yeah. Crimson ride on my sail. Okay. Turning towards the uh, prowls at dusk. And then starting to attack. Twice. That's 14 to hit. If 14 misses. Alright, second attack. And so does an 11. <laughs> oh. Buddy. All right, that's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Me slash next, mm. next time, yeah, next time, next time. <laughs> Your weapon just keeps, like, striking at the body of this thing, but not managing to open, uh, to just crack it open. Um, you're leaving dents behind, but not enough to slow it down. Pip, um, this thing is right here in Brook's face. Yeah. It's a machine. It's not quite... Uh, what you were looking for? No, it isn't. But it's something. <laughs> uh, Pip's going to cast Magic Stone on a few stones in his pouch, and then is going to hurl one towards Prowls at Dusk. Okay. An improved stone? An improved Magic Stone. So let's see how this goes. Nineteen to hit. Nineteen hits. For two d six plus four. Ten points of magical bludgeoning damage. Uh, that, that. Yeah, ten points of magical bludgeoning damage. Um, as you toss the rock, it like like a 
like a falling star, it leaves behind a little sparkly trail. Uh, and where it hits, it just melts through the metal. Uh, it's just as effective as Virion's bullet was. Uh, and then Pip's going to hide behind the professor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that brings us to... I missed the ping. Where is it? Over here. <clears throat> And some dashing. You know, get over here. Wait, that doesn't work. It's just gonna run as fast as far as it can. Um, so upon Vera and Brooke, there is already a second one. Uh, seconds after take a cold out for them uh, to watch out for them. And Good Virion. Damn, fast. Good. Um. So, as this thing is coming, charging, she's going to quickly swap out the gun for the rapier. And... My mouse is so bad. I'm sorry. It's going to, uh... You're fine. Yes. It's just... It's frustrating me. Oh. <laughs> it around the side of it. And... Uh... Give it a poke, and I forgot last time that I have extra attack now, but it's fine. I can hit extra attack hype! Yes, Ooh. uh... And... Flanking with both, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Flanking with my back, but still flanking. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> matter. It's uh, short and just facing. Brooke is like looking straight ahead. He has both of these within. Uh, it's like, a good oh. thing I am an elf. <laughs> <laughs> Two natural teams. There we go. Yeah, yeah there much it better. is. Much better. <laughs> 25 hits. All right. Still no ones. Still, Still no ones. ones. Are you really skirting it? <laughs> as Back close as you could get. Yep. Uh, 15 magical piercing because it's a magical weapon. And then we'll hit him again. In uh, no need. Uh, you're, oh. you're this is the new sword you picked up while you were with the party, right? Yes. Ah, uh, what is it called? The name is escaping me. Uh, it is on my character sheet that I am looking at right now. It is Dustblade. Dustblade, yes, that's right. Um, your the the blade of your weapon is not too dissimilar in color to the just gray metal of this creature. Um, and mm. you cut through it just like butter, um, and you hit something right in the center of uh, um, this machine, uh, and you feel your weapon catching for a moment, and you pull away. And through the 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 cut you have just opened through the metal, you can see something glowing and glowing brighter and brighter and brighter. It begins to hurt your eyes, and the entire creature uh the metal it's made out of right before your eyes it just begins to melt away leaving behind a puddle of metal that begins to be absorbed into the ground uh-huh interesting like that. <laughs> well you process that for a second and then I'm going to I'm going to skirt around it, I think I can. I don't have that much movement. Uh, that's fine. Go back this way. And hit that one. Okay. You reposition yourself this time beside Brooke. Uh, go for it. Wait, I get to roll again, or what? No, I'm at I'm attacking again. I got extra attack oh. uh, last level. 24 hits? Sorry. <clears throat> it was thinking about figured. something. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, 10 damage. Okay, 10 damage. And this one, <laughs> because of the injuries it already had, um, the exact same thing happens. <laughs> 
Uh, so you just drive your blade through its uh, uh, through its torso, uh, and again you strike something that seems to be glowing right at its center, roughly where you would place a heart in a natural creature, um, and it becomes so hot that the entire body just melts away. I'm not sure if we want to take a closer look at one of those uh, at some point, but um, yeah. I'm not sure what to make of this. It's going to be my turn. Okay, Pontifex. The two that were directly within view um, are <clears throat> have melted away. Uh, Tech has warned that it is more coming. Uh, yeah, then the You can see them unless there is like a tree in the way. I'd say you yeah. can see uh, them both. I've drawn both. <laughs> uh, then. But yeah, I think the professor is just going to keep it uh, pretty simple. Uh, he is going to move up again. Uh, and actually, uh, the corpses, you said that they've, like, they've kind melted. of started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is there something I can do to try <laughs> to figure out, like, are are these made out of something recognizable? Are these, like, magic constructs? Or are these, like, actual material? That sort of thing. If you Trying to do, figure out what these things are made out of. Uh, if you do, I would require it to be, like, your full action. That's fine. Okay. He's more concerned about that than like fighting. Everyone seems to be doing okay, well. Go with ahead that. and roll an arcana check. <laughs> wow. uh, how about how about a dragon inspiration? A dragon inspiration. Right. Anything to avoid adding a one to your counter. You know what? It's not a one. Mm. It's four plus <laughs> uh, eight. It's a, twelve. It's a twelve. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, to your logical mind, it doesn't make sense that uh, these things melted so quickly. Uh, and if the heat was such that you know, steel or iron or most metals would have melted uh, this quickly. You feel like you would feel it from this distance. Uh, mm -hmm. So whatever they're made of, uh, your like immediate, th uh, immediate thought is that you have no clue. Like it doesn't match up with anything that you would have any information on. Um, but unfortunately, because it's already gone, um, that's... You can't really draw any conclusions. You have nothing to work with. Okay. Um, and no one has a... Uh, ranged weapon currently, do they? Pippi's throwing rocks. Virin has put away her gun, but she does have it. Uh, Tech has a bow. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Isn't it... Not me. The boat that the one with Sarah's had? Mm hmm. Eh. Um, then, okay, yeah, let's. Uh, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to use a first level uh, healing word on someone because it doesn't really matter which of the spells I use, but I'm trying to cast a spell on someone as a bonus action to let them uh, take an order cleric attack. Uh, I think Tekka is the one that's up there. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah. I will use my healing word uh, magic on Tekka to let him take a voice of authority attack as a reaction. Ooh, very fancy. Okay, let's uh, go pew pew on Prol <laughs> as Prolsa does too. Yes, Tekka, when, when the professor speaks, you act. Um. <laughs> Yeah, the professor probably doesn't even see that kitty, but just like by instinct somehow, <laughs> the order has been made. Yeah, this is like low shrubbery. He he, he can't see the glinting of the metal. 
up. Uh, he maybe noticed it and then promptly forgot about it uh, in in <laughs> favor of melting Terminator cats. Nineteen hits. <laughs> like a liquid metal. Am I out of ink? Six seven. Okay. Um, non magical piercing. Uh, seems like it. Yeah. Got it. Uh, you pull back the, the, the bowstring as hard as you can. Uh, the arrow manages to find a, a section of, of the machine where uh, it's not particularly resistant. You just kind of get stuck in there. Um, Pontifex, is that everything from you? Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, I have five more feet of movement. Uh, he's going to move another. Okay, this is difficult terrain um, through the oh. shrubs. So maybe you can only make uh, it. He here. was here, so I to here. Okay. Uh, moving on to this one. Let's see how far we can go. This far. Plus a little hop down this edge. Um, Viren, you hear... Uh, Viren and Brooke, both. Uh, you hear this approaching before you, you see it. I uh, just see... Where most felines will be pretty silent when they move, uh, these ones, there is, uh, in the in the new silence of the jungle that Viren you have caused, um, you're able to hear just the heaviness of the metal with every step. I know there is uh, one directly behind you. Tekka, you just took an excellent shot. What's next? Uh, yeah, I think from this position, there, there's not much else that Tekka could do, honestly. So I guess just fire again? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Hmm, that doesn't go well. Hmm, <laughs> an eleven is a miss. Yeah. Uh, You're up in a tree, right? Yeah. Okay. So distance would probably be too big. For I that. think you're, you're, I th you think that's more than twenty five feet then. Yeah, I would imagine so. Oh, oh yeah. no! That means it's a disadvantage <laughs> too. Well, twenty five feet from Virian. Yeah, I don't think there's much else that Tekka can do. Sadly, uh, I think I'll just call it there. <laughs> <laughs> Just be on the lookout, I suppose, for even more kitties. Okay. Uh, turns out that this kitty can absolutely climb. Let's see. It will be 25 feet. I don't know if we established how high, how high up Tekka is. I don't think we ever did. But I didn't need to roll for how... Far he climbs, so it can't That's be that true. big victory. Yeah, yeah, didn't ask for a roll. Um, so it's gonna be less than fifteen feet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, as his metal claws just dig into the trunk of this tree, uh, pulling off pieces of bark on its ascent, uh, and almost as if it weighs nothing, it makes its way up to you and uh, tries to just pull you down. I'm going to say that this doesn't apply. So do we have... We have a 22 to hit. That hits. Didn't do my thing go. This is 13 points of piercing damage. Alrighty. Ah, as this machine uh, bites on one of your feet and... Uh, um, it's just holding onto you and like trying to pull you down, and you have a firm grip with one of your hands onto the branches, um, and you're like dangling like that and trying to kick with the other foot until it lets go. Uh, but it's right there and ready to do it again. Oh, okay, great. Uh, this one has melted. Um, and before we move on to Brook, uh, Tekka, with your with your vantage point, you're the first person to hear it and to see it. Um, there's a sound not too dissimilar from these 
uh, heavy mechanical uh, footsteps you've been you've been hearing all around you. There's this glint in the distance, not too different from what you've been seeing, um, but the steps <laughs> you're hearing are heavier. The glinting you're seeing is golden, uh, and yes, Jory, these are just the babies. <laughs> <laughs> As another machine, um, oh, nailed it. Ah, uh, bigger than the others, uh, and made of different metals, is uh, approaching quickly. Uh, so, oh, 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 let me bring you back to Brooke, and uh, we have the initiative. Ah, uh, so Brooke, your turn. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Puppies all the way up. Like one of those Russian nesting dolls, but cats. <laughs> I would buy hmm. one. They could be like standing up on two legs, so the shape is roughly the same. I'll go here. Okay, <laughs> do you step over the puddle of metal? If you ask me like that... <laughs> Do, it. Do it! Do you step in the spooky puddle? I mean, I walked through it, so yeah. Okay, noted. Go on. Oh, God. You've got drippy feet now. It consumes right. you like a metallic this venom. This crawl the dusk has to pay for this. My shoes are ruined. <laughs> This is the one we've established long ago that the quality of a man is by the quality of oh, their shoes. Oh my god! Hey. There it is. It was supposed to also be an advantage, but yeah, you just... <laughs> oh. Is your flanking? So, yeah, you step eight. through this, not a care in the world, barely notice your, your like, boots slightly sticking to the ground. Go around. <laughs> so, 2d8, do, do I... I double, don't double the right dice, right? Yes, you, you double. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then look at all the dice. Was... <laughs> then Virion was plus four. Plus four. Yes. Yes. Plus eleven. <laughs> nice. Hmm. Hmm. Oh my goodness. This would be super okay. great And because the right is active, this <laughs> now counts as magical, yeah? Yeah. At least, okay. well... Uh... Oh god, not so the eight. So the first two aren't. No, I'm, a... no, the entire weapon should count as magical. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I uh, thought so it would be like one d eight slashing and then one d six radiant. Yeah, I, I think it says in your right description that whenever the right is active, the weapon counts as a magical. Oh, nice. All right. Uh, so it's the full twenty six. Okay, and that's that's just your first attack. I'm making up for the previous misses. Mm hmm. Shoot! No, I dropped my thing. Remember to roll advantage. Yeah, yeah. Well, your right is in effect. Attacks made with this weapon are magical. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's a thirteen at advantage. Mm-hmm. Two fives. Yikes! <laughs> that misses. Uh, uh, I think you should make that attack again. Okay. <laughs> I think you should uh, redo. <laughs> I think you should try that again. Very <laughs> interesting. Oh. Have you tried the pointy end? <laughs> Was I supposed to roll it with advantage again? Yeah, right? Send it to me. Um, I can let me double check the wording. I, let's see. It's One probably just a reroll, point. right? Yeah, repeat the attack against the same target. Okay. So. Well, repeat. that's a 19. What? Yeah, it's re Repeat what? the attack was uh, wording. Oh, so he, he, the advantage remains? Yes. Holy You're the DM, but crap. the wording is... That's awesome. 19 hits? No. Imagine if he was all an elf. <laughs> <laughs> what if we were just all elves? <laughs> next next party, if you have a TPK. <laughs> Always all elven elves. accuracy. We all move around as a big conga line with the sole <laughs> goal of flanking everything in the world. <laughs> Elf warlord I party. I did a math. Yep. Wow. Uh, just Sounds these sick. 
two blows. Like you're chop, you're slicing this machine into pieces. Uh, the re the literally bits of metal just shedding off. Plus, Plus twenty. 20. <laughs> Anything else on your turn, Brooke? Nope. <laughs> Moving on to Pip. All right, Pip is going to first step over here. As he's running, he's going to pull out a slingshot and uh, flip one of his magic stones towards uh, this guy. Mm-hmm. Toss. And that's a 20 to hit. 20 hits. Or 10 points of damage. Just do ten points of damage. Yeah, it's exactly what you needed. Oh, actually, <laughs> you needed less, but uh, <laughs> you did it anyway. Um, if I overshoot it, is it like the price is right? <laughs> the price yeah, you did. It doesn't count. You have to do exactly count. enough. Uh, you happen to time and aim your attack in just a perfect way, where your pebble ends up in one of the cuts the brook has just made. Um, and you actually don't really see the damage from, from the rock. You just see that it disappears inside the body of this creature. And then it, the entire thing uh, begins to melt away. And it's gone. Yeah, Pip's not even watching that. He, uh, he just did it as he's running this way. Okay. Uh, Into the difficult terrain. Yep. Uh, seeing this one, Pip is going to use his bonus action to telekinetically shove it off the tree. Oh, okay. It needs to make a strength save. Boink. Strength save. Uh, 17. It succeeds. Okay. <laughs> oh. It's clinging just firmly to the tree. <laughs> That's it. All right. Uh, Puddle and Virion. All right, so looking at the situation, the one fighting on Tekka and then Mama over there, I think she'll just look at Tekka and just. Uh, are you all right over there? Do you need, do you need help or? You got this. This is fine. You have greater dangers. This is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. So I think we're going to. This is fine. <laughs> I can't count today. Five, six, It's fine. We're gonna do the shrouded wolf thing again, and poof. Maybe just there, whatever. And I think I'm just going to uh, ready an action to poke this thing with the rapier once it gets close enough to do so. Okay. Antifacts? Uh, yeah, now that the big one is here. Uh, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna deal with this again. Uh, I'm gonna use the last of my ones, and I'm gonna psychic glance at that one. The big one? Uh, yeah, uh, glistens okay. in moonlight. Mm -hmm, uh, another mm -hmm. DC 16 int save. Thirteen? Nice. Uh, it fails. So, uh, it is going to take a bunch of psychic damage, and it is incapacitated until the start of my next turn. Okay, so it's a failure uh, on a 13. Yeah, yeah, it failed the cool. save. It chooses to succeed. Ow. Oh, oh. Of course it I does. swear the spell is cool, guys. I promise <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, I'm sorry. Is the psychic glance in the room with us right now? Uh, so that takes 13. Thirteen. Ah, uh, space-time ripples around uh, the bigger cat. Um, hardly slowed down. How do you decide down. to not be stupid? 
<laughs> what wizardry is this? Uh, anything else? Uh, and then, uh, yeah, uh, this. How deep is this pit? Ten feet. Can I lower myself down the pit <laughs> instead of just leaping? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. Oh, you fit. <laughs> I don't know if he has the upper body strength to pull yeah, himself by calculator. <laughs> That's his grave. <laughs> it's fine. I can just fill it with water. It's fine. <laughs> All right, puddle and uh, uh, mom. Metal mommy. Metal oh, mommy. Well, Virion, um, it's been fun. Virion, you attack first. Yes. You're readying right. yourself for this. Boop, boop, boop. Watch this be the one. Oh! oh. oh. Wow. Nice. Did, you, did you just call it? No, I called the opposite. <laughs> Oh, as, I thought you as, meant as, the one as no. in, like, no, I mean, the <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was but the I one, a, dramatically speaking. A, um, sneak oh. attack, yeah, this turn. So. Look at his eyes! It was not ready. What? Okay. Oh my hmm. god. I hadn't sneak attacked yet. Wait, how do you get sneak attack? Are you a weird I'm, rogue? I'm, all, I'm also a rogue, yeah. Are you a weird rogue, though? Oh, uh, because I had... Oh, no, I don't sneak attack. Right, I didn't have advantage, so ignore that. Ah! Uh, okay. Never mind. I knew there was, like, a weird sneak attack thing. Uh, with, like, swashbucklers. Yeah, swashbucklers can do it. I'm not as... I'm not as... You know, swashbuckling. Check. Wait, are, are you an inquisitive? No, I'm a pistolier. Okay. Yeah, she's okay, like no, 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 no. Say, those are the two I, rogues I can I think of that can sneak attack without people. That's a homebrew one. Let me double check it because it has a similar thing. It's just been. Uh... Okay. Uh... You don't need advantage on the attack roll to use your sneak attack against a creature if you're within 30 feet of it. No other creatures are within 5 feet of you. And you don't have what? disadvantage on the roll. Oh, snap! Yeah, it's it's really similar to Swashbuckler except for I get a gun. <laughs> If you're within so you do feet, get it. So. Gun buckler. Oh, it doesn't have. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't have to be with a gun either. You just get it. Yeah, yeah. That's that's so get pretty sweet. <laughs> ah. All right then. It's, it's just been eighties. I don't have to redo my map. with this character. Mm. Yay! I'm getting damage. Um. Partially because of the size of this machine, uh, landing the hit is not part uh, is not the difficult part. Uh, it's coming straight at you. You hold out your weapon. The hard part is keeping your balance, uh, just avoiding being toppled over by this mass of artificial muscles uh, as it leaps onto you and uh, begins to attack. First one, the first bite is a twenty-four to hit. That does hit. Clear this. Plus this. That is thirty five points of piercing damage. Whoa! Yes, I have res uh, I have resistance right now from the blessing. The shadow roll. Okay. Thing. Uh, so, so you take half as much. Math. Was... Yes, and uh, um, you are grappled. Okay. So grappled and considered restrained for as long as a grapple uh, is uh, in effect. Okay. Eighteen damage is half. Yes. Is my math? Uh, uh, half. Half. Uh, seventeen. Mm. Okay. Seventeen. Okay. Uh, and then it, it does that like that that cat thing where like once it has you it starts uh, uh, scraping scratching at you with the back of its legs. Um, it attacks again. It's a claw attack. Twenty five to hit. So hits. 
Meh. 18 points of slashing damage. Nice. Um, if you're resistant, then it will be 9. So resistant, yep. It's everything. All, all damage is still start my next turn. Okay. And one more attack with the claws. Um, oh, ugh, did I count? No, that's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. 13 to hit. That misses. Dang it. Okay, that's fine. Um. Okay, that's it. Uh, this giant feline, almost it, the the color of its mantle, it's almost like gold, a little bit paler. Uh, it would be a sight to see if it wasn't for the fact that it's currently trying to just tear you to pieces. Uh, Tekka, you have your own. Ooh, you have your own uh, uh, beast to contend with. Mm-hmm. And Tekka was planning to deal with this little kitty, but then wait. Uh, what? I just realized that the attacks were supposed to be at advantage because she is she's restrained. <laughs> oh. After the first one, let me just reroll the second one I missed. Sure. Before, um, it's a thirteen again. <laughs> nope. <laughs> My attack. I continue. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, Tekka will activate Step of the Wind. To oh. for yeah for uh, a big leap and an extra dash, uh, and seeing this big kitty being pretty dangerous, uh, Tech is going to take action, jump off the tree, and because of ring of free action, difficult terrain is nothing to him, and he just <gasps> dashes through. Nice, without the nice. <laughs> nice, my hero. Heck, is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Okay, uh, it's yeah. time to go for a uh, slam a lama. Let's do this. Slam a lama. Slam a lama. So the what, what what were the mechanics involved there? Was a dash with a bonus action? Yeah, yeah. So it's I dash see. with a bonus action. The, and the then, ring uh, is the what ring. Uh, makes uh, that's amazing. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> the the uh, the machine you were fighting blinks and you're gone. But for hits. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, uh, let's see here. Uh, and then hold on, there might be some more shenanigans that I need to do. Uh, yeah, we're doing the maneuvering attack, uh, which will add d6 and will let an ally move uh, without provoking opportunity to act. So. Uh, if anyone would like to move, uh, this would be the time. <laughs> it is only one ally, so whoever would be most useful. Someone else can do it. I'm good. Yeah, I don't think very can. <laughs> I'm fucking restrained. I'm restrained anyway, yeah. 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 So. Yeah. I mean, I could get there, but I get there in my turn anyways. Okay. Yeah, so I could no maybe get part. out of the hole I have climbed down. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so that is nine damage, and then we're mm -hmm. gonna do. That's with like your staff, bludgeoning. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. This is bludgeoning with the core staff. Got it. Uh, and so then core damage. It needs to roll a Constitution saving throw. Mm, con save. Let's see. I am retiring this die because it's the third Aww. three in a row I'm getting. Um, oh my god. So Yay. I'm just going to say that it succeeds. <laughs> uh, because <laughs> it chooses to. Okay. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, and then I am going to do a flurry of blows, which is two punches that are magical in nature. Okay. And in terms One, of resistances two. and stuff. Got it. Uh, um, what was the con save for? Uh, so it would be stunned if it failed. Oh, I see. It's a stunning strike. Stunning strike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like you ran around it, uh, and and the first yeah. blows uh, you just take an advantage of the fact that it's like you're directly behind it. 
Uh, so you can't mm -hmm. see them coming, but you can't quite like reach for the head or for the neck from where you're at. Uh, so even though you do hit with as much strength as you, as you can put behind the blow, um, that's not enough to incapacitate the machine. At least on this try. Right. But Terra's gonna keep trying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Punching my lead. Does it 18 hit? 18 hits. All right. Are, are your alarm strikes been attacks? Uh, what was that? Are your unarmed strikes uh, weapon attacks? Uh, I don't uh, yeah. think so. Oh, are they? Yeah, they are. Uh, they are not. Uh, they are not. Oh, how do we describe it? Uh, they are melee attacks. I think they're weapon attacks. I think specifically monks make them weapon attacks. Okay. Because like one of these features is specifically about unarmed strikes, and that does not. You know, it doesn't classify that as a weapon attack. I don't know. Uh, they are melee <laughs> oh, weapon attacks. They are not attacks with a melee weapon, but they are melee weapon attacks. Okay. okay. Does that answer it, Jory? Uh, uh, yes, because it's weapon damage rolls are what gets the damage bonus. So. Okay. So, so I, add, with the weapon. Uh, I add the plus four then? Or it if fists count as a weapon, or I say DM call. Uh, they do. So yeah, plus four. Okay. Okay. That's ten, and then the other fist gets a try. Uh, and then... You already had the plus four to the ten. Uh, yeah, I did. I did. Got it. So, uh, 25 hits. An extra nine. Wow! <laughs> Have you not uh, been rolling at advantage? We're not oh, technically flanking. Oh, nope. This counts as flanking. Yeah, uh, it's basically it's, if you yeah. draw a line between your spaces and it fully crosses through the creature. Unless, because, uh, wait, no, because it, restrained. Because corners. Oh, no, it's because corners. Uh, if you're on corners, technically it's opposite corners. Oh. Flanking. Also true. I, okay. I guess I was one space. Um, to the but right, it does count, like like because th what what matters is that you can draw it from one square to the other. So like this. Uh, uh wait. Ah. Yeah. It, you're right. Yeah, corners are weird. I am right. <laughs> <laughs> I am right. If I was like, if I was one space to the well, closer to Tekka this way, it would count because then we can go what? vertical. If you were in okay, any was... of these, it would count, yep. right? Yep. Linking rules are janky. But just <laughs> yeah. corners suck. Yeah, corners, <laughs> corners make it harder. Okay, all right. So we're fine. It's, it's you don't fine. have to roll anything else. Yeah, believe me, I would have said something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think there's one last thing to do. Uh, give me one second. Yes. Um, have it... Uh, let me think. What would be best here? So, okay. One question. If it mm. fell prone, would it lose the grip? Or would it? could it still grapple if it was prone? It can still grapple while prone. Okay. <laughs> uh, then I'm just going to say it cannot take a reaction until the end of my next turn. Because I hit with one of the flurry of blows attacks, and that's one of the effects I can choose. Okay. It, can, it can't take a what? You cannot take reaction. a reaction. Oh, all right. Remind me in case I like forget. Yeah, okay, will do. Uh, that is the end of Take a Stare. Okay. That was incredible. Yeah, wish wish. <laughs> Out of the wish, jungle wish. we go. Uh, yeah. Back to the machines we go, who do not have to worry about a difficult terrain. They just go, they just zoom. Uh, gonna leave it up to the dice. Uh, since Tekka is zooming, uh, this machine is going for the small boy. It looks mm. easier to eat. It just goes <clears throat> murder. <laughs> uh, where did I put the salad block? Over here. All right. 
Pip. I am banishing this die too because it's another three. I cannot. Oh. It's a different <laughs> die! <laughs> this is when I hit you guys. Uh, so does a 13 hit Pip? No, wait, that's not no. even 13. It's a way less. Okay. It doesn't. Uh, it only is that gets all it can do? one attack. Uh huh. Oh. Puddle. Rook. <clears throat> hmm. I'll go over here. And I'm flanking. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> As I've learned. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, rolling with advantage. Does 16 hit? 16 does it. Woo! Okay. Do I still get the five or the four? Yep. As long as you're within twenty-five feet, can see or hear me, and aren't, and I'm not incapacitated. Not gonna lie, it feels very unreal. Woo! Uh, twenty damage. Yeah. Uh, you All strike right, it down. So... You're like aiming for the neck and trying to get it to let go, of Virion. Um, but the these metal jaws are just locked in place. Well, let's see if it's locked after the second hit. <laughs> if I hit? Yeah. Sixteen. Whoops. Did it right, Winther. Two solid blows, and again, you're kind of beginning to shed away pieces of metal with your with your weapon. Uh, but uh, uh, there's a there's a short while to go still. Uh, I mean, right. He is still holding on to Virion. This is fine. <laughs> is that everything from you, Brooke? Yes. Okay. Pip. Uh, Pip seeing the giant metal cat chasing towards him, he's just gonna start to run away. <laughs> <laughs> Comes over here. Okay. Do I get an opportunity attack or other shenanigans? Uh, you get one. Can I land here? Is this? You're you're Pip. Let's say yes. You're small. I mean, you're not <laughs> small, but you're small. I am small. Um, and I have rolled. My size a... is small. Oh, you said small, so you definitely can. I've rolled a two, so this also is going to jail. Oh. I have one die left, and I have to dig into my bag. Maybe this one is something. Pip turns around and slingshots his last magic stone at this one. Um, uh, the one you just moved away from? Yes. Okay, sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't sure what your cursor was. Go for it. Uh, nine. Yeah, you can also okay, banish I can't that either. die. <laughs> uh, you need nine misses. Um, like you nearly set your foot into the tra uh, into the the hole, and at, like, you have to <laughs> you have to catch yourself. And the pebble goes somewhere. You're worried you might not find it later. Pip uh, glances over at the situation over here, mm -hmm. and is going to telekinetically pull Virian back, eyes dilating wide, and is going to pull her out of the. Uh, cat's grip. That's yeah. appreciated. Yes. We're not gonna no resistance. <laughs> How far back? Bloop. Five. Okay. Just five feet. Yep. Um, Enough. You like time it with Brooke's strikes, um, just at a moment where the machine flinches a little bit and the grip on Viren is weakened just enough where your magic can pull her off. Um, Virion's, uh, your your cloak, however, is left behind, still in the, uh, in, in the teeth uh, of the machine. Like, le legit, because I kind of need that. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for me. It, it, is, it is a magic item that I have. Oh so. no, wait, I was just, <laughs> it was just for flavor. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the, the red one is said, the skirt part. 
Okay, the script right. is fine. That's, that's... <laughs> <laughs> like, like focus mechanical. <laughs> no, I was just trying to narrate and not like take your items. <laughs> this, this, this is still my Ah, uh, all right, back to Virion. You have been right. freed just in time. Yes, yeah, I'd say probably like, literally like, same motion, getting pulled back. She just scrambles up to her feet, and um, no risk, no reward, and she's going to circle on. This way, that, not all the way that way, just to be on the other side mm, of mm. here. Yeah. And, uh, right here. It's a good thing I'm an elf. <laughs> <laughs> 14 hits? But, but go for it's that crit. crit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It hits better, but you know. <laughs> uh, you hit regardless. Yes, hit regardless. Um, so we're not gonna sneak attack this one just in case I do crit for the next one. Or okay. six piercing on that one. Got it. And then number two. And he hits. If I can. <laughs> still gonna try crit. You Thank gotta you, try. Hits. You gotta try, but not, not wrong one. So, what about the sneak attack? I didn't sneak attack on the first one. Right. So I could try to sneak attack on the second one in case I crits. I, right. But I did not. But I'm still sneak attacking it. Oh, okay, you're rolling it. I was wondering why you didn't roll yes, the, the yes. sneak attack. Okay, yeah, oh, okay, I, I get hit it. The, I hit the one with the advantage, so there was way too Got many Got it. Guys. All right, <laughs> so that's 11 plus 19? Yeah. 30? Uh, look. Yeah. Uh, cool. How would you like to do this? Um. So I think, you know, as she kind of scrambles to her feet, dashes around, um, I think she's actually... Just being ballsy, and as she kind of goes in with the one hand with the rapier, she's paying more attention to getting her uh, not cloak back. <laughs> so it's kind of a distracted, like, hit it and then hit it better than she anticipated. Mm. Okay. And once again, as your, uh, your combined efforts manage to open up a big enough, uh, ah, quotation marks, wound. Uh, for for your blade to manage to reach all the way to the center of the torso, and you have to like press your blade in all the way to the hilt. Um, you tap into something right at its core, uh, and this one, despite its its size, it also just begins to melt away right before your eyes. There's one more machine left, uh, still now yeah, currently chasing after Pip. Um, do you have any movement left or anything? So I'm going to bonus action dash and. Oh yeah, which you can. Yep. Back over here. Mm, the next bit. This, this square. Next yep. bit. Which brings us to Pontifex next. Uh, he would like to hoof and pick, try to poke his head out uh, <laughs> the hole, uh, after hearing lots of combat grunting and, uh, you know, a big thing in this direction, presumably mm -hmm. melting noises. Mm -hmm. uh, so is, is it just is it just difficult terrain to climb? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, all 20 feet of my movement uh, to this. <laughs> Uh, and then in a moment of panic, let loose a Bwah! and a fireball. <laughs> fireball! <laughs> he's just gonna rip it. Uh, except these are. Uh, I I think this might be a bad idea, but I think he thinks liquid uh, electricity, so I am gonna do a lightning ball. Fireball! Okay. <laughs> uh, so he needs to make a DC 16 deck save. Lightning fireball is he's also going to jail. 
What did Eight. something finally fail us say? Kaboom! <laughs> Kaboom! <laughs> 24 lining, you said. Um, yeah. Which number is this? Oh, it hasn't taken any damage yet. Um, so it's going to be the full 24, but it's not enough to kill it. But, um, but yes, it, uh, its body kind of acts like a lining rod. The lining is sucked into it, and you can see it just uh, um, absorbing the electricity and, and glowing red hot. Not melting away, though. Uh, I think in his moment of uh, throwing a gigantic 40-foot uh, diameter lightning ball uh, in this thing still being okay, uh, uh, he is going to take the moment to, uh, I guess, stand in between it and Pip and shout something. What are you doing, Pip? Do it now! <laughs> <laughs> do the thing you're going to do! Pip is just staring at the professor incredulously. <laughs> do the thing! Do it now! Give me Pip. Get to the chopper! <laughs> uh, then Tekka! Um, yeah, I suppose Tekka will <laughs> just do thing. another run! Do you run through... Hey, by that I mean Tekka! Do you run, like do you run through the puddle? Golden puddle? Uh, yeah, do, do a little leap off the rock here, I guess. You know, something like that. Oh, okay, you avoid stepping on it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's so. go with that. <laughs> uh, alright. Let's see what we're doing here. Maybe not. <laughs> Nine misses. Let's try again. Oh, Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has done enough I just cool called things you cool. for today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Tech is really windy. It's been running a, a lot right now. Just, Excuse you, know, you, I said, Pip, do it now. <laughs> 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 Wait your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, I think uh, we're just going to use a key point to prepare a dodge action and call it a day. Bye bye. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see if uh, this machine decides that it's uh, um, to retaliate against the lining throwing professor or the delicious snack to its right. Pontifex. Uh, so, he didn't feel anything from you, Tekka. I might not even have noticed you. <laughs> just keeps charging after Pip, and there's something in the way. Uh, and the that's professor something... is standing there behind his shield, acting as a wall for Pip while he releases his ultimate attack. <laughs> I, I like the, these dice more. Uh, 25 to hit. Uh, yeah, I will, uh, I will use my reaction to cast shield, but it still hits. I'm not supposed to know that, but it would still hit. Uh, my AC is 25. Ugh, I'm not in the habit of not to... <laughs> I need to know your ACs okay. just to say it. Oh. No, I would have, I would cast shield regardless of the number. If it hits, mm. I'm casting shield if I have the ability to, All so. Right. Uh, okay, so that means the hit still goes through, uh, the total is this much plus that that's 13 points of piercing damage um as you get nibbled on that's all this can do puddle brook can you finish this no i can't reach it <laughs> i said pip do it now <laughs> you like like i am a fool I will just use my action uh, to get here. Okay. The, 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 the difficult terrain? Are you c oh. considering it? Oh, no, I sure am not. <laughs> Alright, back to square one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is 15. In, uh, yeah. It's 20, 20 here. 25. 35, 35 45. 45. Mm -hmm. You can. What's the point? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, 55 here with the diagonal. 55, yeah. Probably. 60. Doesn't matter. Stop hey, taking can... no. <laughs> Run, run, run. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Just offering moral support. Yep. <laughs> Pip, 
Pip's heroic <laughs> paper mask is is just like placed firmly on his face, and he looks at the professor and holds up his dagger and is going to leap across the trench, come around to this side, hold up his doll, cast hex on prowls at dusk as the as strings from the doll start to latch around its its uh, legs and appendages and then is going to plunge the dagger into it maybe okay. Child with the knife go roll and attack roll okay, this has happened with advantage <laughs> because of flanking yeah i are you an elf what am i rolling <laughs> okay it's uh, dex roll plus with a normal dagger proficiency That's... so six here we go 22 hits? Uh, it's not 22, it's 20. Oh. I, I oh. rolled both instead of with advantage. Oh, oops. 20 hits. Okay. <laughs> uh, just dagger. Mm -hmm. D4 plus 3? Plus 4. Plus 6. Plus 4. What? So plus 3 plus... Plus 3 we got plus 4 for doing. I rolled my hex damage with it also. Okay, here we go. Fifteen points. Fifteen means we get up to this much. It's a magic knife too, right? It counts Supposedly. as magical. <laughs> okay. It's a solid hit. Aw. <laughs> no. Pip just looks up at the professor and then <laughs> takes off his mask and looks disappointed. <laughs> <in himself. laughs> oh, I believed in you. <laughs> I'm also oh. offended just, that your just... stupid knife did the same as a lightning ball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know more than my psychic glances. <laughs> <laughs> Does that bring us to Vivian's turn, or do you have something else? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. How far is this? Five foot wide. Yeah. You can leap over it. So, like, jump five foot? Okay. So, five, ten. Can't do math. Uh, between moving and dashing, I can get over here, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 The section dash. Let me yeah. help you. It'd be thirty feet to get where you are, right there. Thank you. Yeah, I'm lagging a bit on here. Anyway. Um... <laughs> Things are happening. Things are happening. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. There we go. Let, let the lag pass. I want to be across from Brooke. That's where I want to be. <laughs> okay. Yep. Then, You're in the right place. And then... Uh, this. And then... Yeah. 19 hits? I mean, still gotta... Try for one more, just in case it crits. It does not crit. That's uh... 13 points of damage? No, that was to crit fish. Oh, oh okay. I am, I am lagging I a lot on, on uh, tabletop swim right now. I am going to sneak attack on that one, so 17 points of damage. Okay. 17 ends it. You got like... All right. You get the killing blow on like all of them minus one. Yeah, I think so. I think. Jeez. I think so. Uh, yeah, your newfound weapon uh, once again just strikes through. Uh, metal is nothing to your sword. Uh, and as the final machine uh, melts before your eyes, you all pause and take a uh, take a deep breath and look around, and that's the last of the machines. Well done! Ooh. How about a little break? Nice. Sounds, Sounds good. Yes. Yeah. Good. Okay, I'm gonna say like 10 minutes so at the... at the 35. Oh. Works. All right. We'll see you in just a little bit. See you in 10 minutes. Cool. Let's begin where we left off. 
you all pause and look around and you're listening and no more machines are approaching. You can just hear the sound of your heavy breathing as things calm down and beginning to feel safe again until the puddles of metal on the ground begin to boil. They bubble and bubble and they splutter on your boots and you all step away instinctively from them until the metal begins to rise up liquid, incandescent, uh, just glowing hot and it rises and rises and rises until it's away from the ground just floating upward and condensing together in a single ball above your heads. And then it bursts. Instead of uh, liquid metal falling on you uh, like dangerous rain, what falls upon you is darkness. Light is sapped from your surroundings and you hear this hissing from all around you as if you were surrounded by hundreds and hundreds of these machines, each of them uh, threatening you. And then... After a few seconds of this display, the light settles in, cascades through the leaves once again, the metal is gone, the hissing is gone. There is no trace of the machines left behind. Oop. You're free to act. Huh? I have a feeling that we haven't seen the last of that. Is everyone okay? We had worse. Better, but worse, certainly. Is this more Ladarian magic at play? I don't know, but I've recently started studying it, so... As far as I know, uh, I know of two Ladarian spells, one of which tracks things with their blood, and the other one makes weapons. So. I, I don't know if anyone else saw it, but there was um, something... Uh, a core a part or something in them that seemed to be the catalyst for their melting. A core? Yeah, it was uh, bright, and I suppose it was probably hot, but I mean, you, you were by them, you didn't feel too terribly warm, but it melted them. Perhaps it's a magical device to uh, shape the material into that cat-like form. Maybe if we disrupted it, it sort of melted them into blue. In the middle of your That's... little circle of people, Pip is just throwing a bunch of rocks around on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the adults are working and doing things. <laughs> Also, also, he's playing with marbles. Also, collecting the ones that he's thrown. Mm. Uh, <laughs> as part of your ritual casting, you're also looking for the other pebbles. Yeah. A couple of them are like completely missing. It's really hard to no. find them in here. <laughs> Roll an investigation check. Do this to me. <laughs> what if the cats took them? Pip. Pokes on the professor's shoulder and gets him to look. <laughs> <laughs> what? What are you trying to say? There is a well nearby. What? <laughs> it holds up, holds up a rock. Yep, and then, that's a rock. And then puts a puts a hand over his eyebrows <laughs> and starts turning and looking around. No, you sold it to to Glimmer. <laughs> the Boba. <laughs> <laughs> 16. Oh, 16 finds them! 
Yay! <laughs> you don't need me. When, uh, yeah, when, when Pontifex is not cooperating, Pip just storms off on his own. <laughs> A few minutes later, <laughs> he, he has all his rocks. <laughs> they go so fast. Uh, in the 10 minutes, it's going to take Pip to cast the uh, augury. Um, anything you want to do? Okay, just, let me take the lead no. then. Oh, go on. Okay, I was going to say, like, just looking up, like, at the tree branches, the overhead, there's no, like, signs that that big metal ball, like, moved through there, is there? <clears throat> Roll an investigation check. Um, well, if you're just looking upward, maybe it should be perception, actually. I'm better at that. Yeah. Actually, I think I'm better than that. I appreciate I have the advantage from my shield. It's been a while. Yes. How about that? Damn. Ooh. You look up, you squint. You're waiting for a moment when the... Uh, um, the sun is shining through the leaves, uh, um, allow you to take a better look, and there is nothing, not the slightest sign of either the metal still being there or maybe dripping from branches. No, nothing, as if it was never here. The only uh, evidence that uh, these machines were here, it's just the signs of combat, the wounds upon you, uh, the, the footsteps left on the ground, uh, but none of the material they made up their bodies. You look down at uh, uh, a brook's feet, uh, you notice that he had stepped through one puddle and you're, um, you don't even see any trace of the metal on his shoes. She'll point this out to the party that this just, it is gone, gone, gone. Hmm. Is it part of the jungle? Somehow. It's as good of a guess as anything I could put forward. Um... Actually, can the professor make like a quick a thing? D does because we have wounds from them. Uh, does anyone seem to have any residue on them, like on their wounds? Um, I'm just going to go off of like Virun's previous check since this is what prompted it. Uh, um, okay. So like a quick look at all of your wounds. There is. I mean, there's the cuts, there's the bites, the claw marks, but no residue of metal left within your wounds. Oh. That's all I got. Uh, yeah, Tekka is probably just gonna, like, stomp with his core staff on the ground from where the pitfall is. Because he was hearing some metallic cogs. And it's just gonna try, like, to hear a difference in the sound. It's, like, knocking on the ground. Make an investigation check. Mm-hmm. No way! <laughs> <laughs> At the very least, you're making sure that everywhere you step, there isn't going to be a new trapdoor that opens up. Let's go! Uh, but, yeah, no... No unusual sounds anywhere you're stepping. Uh, and thus far, just, just as before, you failed to spot any other trap like the previous one. Um, 
So do the results of your investigation right now, not really um, bring anything. Mm-hmm. Pip is still busy casting his spell. Um, and it's perhaps about a minute or two after you have uh, um, defeated the machines that you hear a voice calling out uh, in, in Plurinan. Um, just kind of far away, uh, about maybe maybe 50 feet or so, uh, shouting, Hey! You got them all, did, did you? They're all gone? I'm resisting the urge to fireball. <laughs> uh, maybe the in the wings. The, yeah, the, the the urge might be difficult, even more difficult to resist as like the person. It sounds like their horizon. voices are uncomfortably <laughs> slow to the ground. <laughs> A gnome. <laughs> like a little demon is a fool. Comes into view. Um, <clears throat> this is one of the um. One of those gnomes whose uh, uh, general coloration of, of the skin and the hair and even the eyes is just very desaturated, like many of the gnomes born uh, after the end of the war. Um, so he, he's just kind of... Uh, he has this l- pale grayish skin. His hair is also gray, just a slightly darker hue. Um, eyes completely lacking any color to them. Um, the slightest piece of coloration on him besides his clothes, which is just some standard leather armor, uh, is his cheeks being a little flushed. Uh, he, he seems to have been... Um, he seems tired. Um, he approaches kind of cautiously. He doesn't have... You can see that he does have a gun and a rifle, but they're both... Neither of them is, is drawn. Um, they're just at his side. And he's approaching like... Tentatively, he gets to the point where he can see all of you, and he's like holding up his hands uh, in a very like just non-threatening manner. And he seems far more worried about your surroundings. He keeps looking right and left and right and left, like he's expecting more of these things to come. Do you firebolt him, uh, Pontifex? Firebolt? <laughs> oh, do you fire- sorry, do you firebolt him? I can I consider my options very strongly. <laughs> Uh, but no, not yet. I think seeing him, Virian will put her shield away, stow her rapier, and just sort of motion that her hands are also empty. Just, you know, good faith. Uh, and... Keep the hands away from the guns and no one's brain melts. <laughs> oh, no, the, you don't have to worry. The gun, gun's not for you. But there's... <laughs> Blasted machines. Oh, I, the way you guys dispatched of them, that's it's really impressive. Um There aren't more of them, uh, are there? There very might well be. Ah, uh, yeah, you don't mind if I uh kind of just you know stick close. Why are you out here? Oh, with a bit of luck, this is going to be my last day out here. I'm about ready to head home. I've had enough of this place. Why are you out here? Right, um, there's a whole camp of us. We're all packing our things. We're leaving. <laughs> We're done here. We're on a mission. Screw the mission. <laughs> This place is haunted. Machines, machines everywhere. Everything around here haunted? Because it sure seems that way. Uh, sorry, Jory, you didn't quite catch what you said. Just to, I'm sorry, you see where my mic is. Um, is, is everything around here haunted? Because it sure seems that way. <laughs> I mean, jungles, machines, and the oceans. As far as I'm concerned, yeah, I'm about ready to head back home. Back in Palerna. So there's a uh, camp of you out. We're pretty far out, aren't we? Uh, from from everything, yeah. Yeah, this place is pretty far. And 
you're out here right now by yourself. Ah. In, in the moment, at least. Ah, uh, well, had a few companions with me. They didn't make it. Encouraging. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sticking with you until I make it back to camp. You don't mind, do you? See, so you have a gun. You're one of us, yeah? You're cool. I mean, those are two separate thoughts, but I, I do my best. Oh, you're um, cool. What do they mean, you're one of them? You know, I mean, do, do you Westerner? Need a Western or? Uh, I just feel like, you know, perhaps uh, dirty laundry has just been aired out in front of you. What do they mean? It means we fought on the same side in the war. I mean, oh. I tried to tell you this earlier, but then you said you didn't have time for it. And... Yeah, like you're not part <laughs> gnome or nothing, right? No. You're, you're sure? No. I, I mean, maybe, I would say far back, but it'd be very, very, very far back. But there could be a little bit. I, I'm not going to completely discount it, but... This is as far as Oops. known family. It explains a lot about thief. Well, at least I'm back from being fish lady. <laughs> Pip, what are you asking as part of your augury? Um, I wrote down. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We seek to travel deeper into the jungle to find more information about the Nahadra or their constructs. You know, the way you worded it is interesting. Let me read this spell again. An omen about the results of a specific course of action. You keep tossing your pebbles, they spin and spin, some of them roll in circles for longer than they should be able to. It feels like no matter how you throw them, no matter which uh, corner, which angle you decide to read them from, you're getting nothing. Hmm. Interesting. Pip on the floor just looks extremely puzzled for a moment and starts picking up his rocks again and putting them back in his pouch. Is uh, everything all right, Pip? Are you good to go? Are you ready? Are you... Did, did you lose more rocks? Pip shakes his head and steps next to you and he um, just sort of gets really close to your side and uh, pulls out a tuft of his own hair and puts it in your palm and then you hear in your mind, something's wrong. I don't think these constructs are from the Nahadra at all. You, you know what? I think I missed some of this part of the history lesson on this thing. You'll have to explain to me later, but there's this is very it's something strange. It's definitely strange. Who's the new friend? I haven't had time to make proper introductions yet, and I think at that she'll turn around to the gnome and sorry for... It, it's been a long day. Um, yeah, the same. What, uh, what, uh, what might your name be? Elric. Felric? Mm, yeah, uh, oh. Felric Baffle Twist. Um, may I may I ask for yours? Of course, um Virian, first go. Okay. 
<laughs> Viren, I have no more questions besides, shall we go? I mean, you said you have a, a camp nearby. I... <laughs> yeah, I am not supposed to take you to it. So how about we get close and then we can say goodbye and you won't have to worry about me ever again. I have money. I think she just kind of looks the rest of the party and says, well, I'm not opposed, but we have other business as well, so it's up to the group consensus, I'm sure. I mean, seeing the last village we found, they didn't want strangers either, and I don't really want to be stuck. With a similar problem again. So I'm done for some money. So I can at least get you close, I'm sure. Especially if we're going same uh which which direction? Just vague. This is fine. Ah uh, south. South of here. Is that where we were going anyway ish or Um pretty kinda? much. Like if you kept traveling south the uh, east you would have eventually hit a lake uh, and you haven't quite gotten to it if you were to head straight uh, straight south uh, you, you would ultimately reach like roughly the same spot where you would have had to go around anyway so it's you, you're not going particularly off track i don't mind playing escort so Nobody else is going to raise too much of a stink. I Just have a mission. Oh, please, you go ahead. I would love to hear yours. <laughs> I have one condition, and Tekka will step up to Felric. You do not feel safe in this jungle. I do not feel safe around that. And he points to the rifle. Ah, we are on the same page. Hand me your ammunition. <laughs> um, okay. Felric is like leaning back a tiny bit uh, the more you approach. He's trying very hard to like not back away, but you can tell he wants to. Um, he's uh, just looking at you up and down your horns, your, your tusks. Um, he's still very much sweating both from the run and just now from... Uh, um, from your request, uh, he he chuckles a bit nervously and he says, uh, 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 but, but please, it's, <laughs> it's the only thing I have to defend myself with. I, I shot one of those things. I'm, I'm a good shot. It's also the only thing you have to betray us with. <laughs> Why would I betray my escort? Come on. I do know. I just know that your people can be a little uh, uh, jumpy start, with the trigger. We start burning bridges. Perhaps we can compromise. I'll hold it, and you can trust me to give it back should you need it. Okay. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. The, the moment we go our separate ways, you, you hand it back. <laughs> okay? Of course, you have my word and my honor. All right. Okay. Yeah. Take him. He reaches. Uh, slowly, he makes sure you're all looking at what he's doing. He's like... Uh, locking eyes with Tekka, um, like just paying attention to whether he gets any additional instructions from him. His, his slow reaches for a pouch. He, you can hear this, uh, um, uh, the the tingle mechanical inside, uh, almost like it's full of uh, coins. And he extends short arm towards Virion. And then he does that twice. Mm. One pouch mm. for the um, the rifle and one for the gun. Different bullets. She'll take them and stow them like in like their own separate pouch or whatever in her bag if she can, and just look at the rest of the party. And is this is this fair to you all? A bit of mediation. I am hurt. Long as they don't trust have it. me. I hold no weapons. I could not fire those bullets if I wanted. I 
don't think it's a matter of trust and firing. I mean, if anything, if that was the warrior, I'm the only one here who can use them. Even more the reason I could have held them, and yet I could not. There's... I'll give you the history lesson later. This is a different land than Plurna. And Tekka will step back. Well, <laughs> you all seem like nice, reasonable, reasonable people. Shall we go? That, that way? <laughs> Bark. The dog says yes. <laughs> follow the dog, follow the dog. <laughs> Oh, you're fine, Austin. <laughs> I had a cat meowing in my microphone for 10 minutes earlier. <laughs> okay. In fact, I prefer this. More <laughs> animals at the table. Yes. <laughs> Pretend that it's under our playing table right now. So, uh, as you move uh, forward, uh, changing your direction just a little bit, uh, um, not letting Felric take the lead, more like just he just points and then you guys maintain your formation and he just sticks in the back next to Virion. Um, after a few like just seconds of hesitation, he begins to like very cautiously inquire as to the rest of your names. And like he's just trying to judge how everyone reacts to his curiosity and from that he decides whether to make small talk with each of you or not. Um... So, imagine Pontifex doesn't really want to. <laughs> I don't know. Tell, tell me about how you like you're like approaching this gnome or caring about him at all. Uh, I don't think he is. I I do think Pontifex is uh in the back, uh, so that the gnome is never behind him. He likes to be behind the gnome. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I think that uh. He likes to he likes to have his little astrolabe in his hand anyways, like he'll occasionally kind of hang it off his belt, but he likes to just kind of have it as like a comfort piece, but I think he's wielding his astrolabe. <laughs> uh, it's like a better word for it. Uh, just ready to go at a moment's notice if this gnome twitches weirdly because, you know, he's incredibly racist. <laughs> and has also okay. been shot by twitchy gnomes. Taka was the one who demanded a Felric hand over the ammunition, but Felric is definitely more worried about you. Uh, you can see it just uh, he, every time he looks back, you're glaring at him. He can feel your glare in the back of his, uh, of his head. And every time he looks back to see that you're still there, still glaring, he gets like a tiny bit, just like an inch closer to Virion. <laughs> Until he's almost like tripping over her feet. Uh, click, click, click. Should I be careful, boat thief? They might be sneaking up on you. Have you ever wondered why people don't like you? Have you ever, uh, deep thoughts. I don't wonder. Rook, are you friendlier to Felric? If 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 Farrick has any questions, I will probably answer. Okay. But Brooke wouldn't ask back. Yeah, he you know he doesn't probe into like any personal life. He asks for the name. Um, I suppose one general question I have for all of you is why you're here in the first place. And like the moment he asks that, and he like makes eye contact with Pontifex again, he immediately throws his hands up in the air and says, hey, "You you don't have to answer if you don't want to. It's your private business. I don't have to know. Just making small talk. <laughs> Anything uh, fun?" You sure. danced around my question earlier. I ask why you are here. You say a mission. You say not what it is for. You say not who called you here. You know what? Fair. <laughs> I don't have to know. Great weather we're having. 
Hip is just awkwardly shuffling between everybody, <laughs> just like <laughs> feeling the tension. <laughs> <laughs> I think at, at this, Virian just kind of leads into Thalric a little bit, and they're not bad. A little, uh, they're not? takes some getting used to you. No, they're... Uh, I trust them. Uh, okay. I don't so, mind the furbolg. Kind of quiet, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how did you come across your certificate? Hmm? Your weapon? How'd you earn it? A... It was an act of heroism. We saved a ship at the cost of our own. It was worth that, at least. Did you get a new ship in return? Not in return, but I did come across one eventually. Huh. All right. I figured it was going to be a cool story. If you want to add more details, feel free to. You, you don't have to. <laughs> it just is actively rolling his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Virian actually gets kind of quiet at that and just... It, it's a longer story that I want to get into now. Right, right. Sorry. It's not, not your fault. It's fine. Uh, you don't need to apologize. He's looking back at Pontifex now. <laughs> just... <laughs> just Thalric. You sternest glare. <laughs> Thalric, I am not here for more fighting. Do you understand that? Right? No, that that's awesome. Me, me, me neither. But we are open to it. No, but they, <laughs> please... I'm defenseless. Look at me, I'm just just a little guy. I hmm. Can I <laughs> inside check? Is he, inside yeah. check this guy? Is he a little guy? This guy doesn't have like a Is spare he just a little guy? Gun. <laughs> he seems you have me until you said I'm just a little guy. Yeah. That That's what seemed... all the biggest guys would have me say. <laughs> Anyone who wants to do an inside check, you can go for it. Stevie is questioning him. <laughs> you put it in the guy with glasses. <laughs> uh, I, I think like, he's full of shit. Yeah, regardless of the role. <laughs> that you, I love him. <laughs> you do. Pontifex, I figure you wouldn't like it. Ah, uh, okay, it's just it's all the rules. I trust him. Just okay. a little guy. Every single <laughs> every single one of you. This 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 is a little guy, scared shitless. <laughs> like no older than than uh than thirty. Um and he seems to be kinda like way in over his head in, in this situation. And like none of you are getting just the slightest hint of malice. He's just terrified. He's just a little guy. <laughs> He's just a little guy. We'll keep him safe. Yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> Checking from Pontifex. I have a different question. You stay your whole camp out here in the jungle. How do you live? Where do you gather food out here? Um, we fish in the lake. Um, we gather lots of fruits you can eat here. Uh, get a get a few hunters in our group. Uh, had a had an Ezin with us. Uh, she knew all sorts of stuff. What we could eat, what we couldn't. Taught us everything we needed. And then she died. We didn't kill her. It wasn't us. She just <laughs> died. I, I I know it's gonna sound suspicious, but ah, uh, uh, don't really know how to explain it. <laughs> One day she was just gone. Gone as in disappeared. As no, in you did not see her. No, no, uh, uh, dead. Oh. 
How long ago was this? Um, about, uh, let me think, one a week ago, no, two, between two to three weeks ago. Everything is just a uh, kind of... Ooh, I feel like I've been on this continent for far too long. How long have you held camp here? Ah, uh, I've been here for three months now. The camp has existed long before I did, before before I got here. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Not anymore, though. We're all leaving. Who made the call to leave? Well, to be fair, our boss did not tell us that we could go. But more and more people have been quitting, and I, I we've all reached the point where we're just all fed up. This isn't worth it. <laughs> we're not gonna die out here. And, uh, if that makes us traitors, well, I guess so be it. At least I get to keep my skin. Have you had any casualties aside from your cousin and... <laughs> um... As of recently... Many... <laughs> many... I mean, we always knew there was this machine crawling around but we got it we killed a few of, of us but eventually we, call, we killed it and we took its head and we hanged it in in front of our camp and things were fine for a few days and then dozens of them started to show up and everything got really nightmarish really quickly and that's what we're drawing the line we're leaving <laughs> we're done When, when that happened, the head that you had, is it still there? You still have it? Oh yeah, we still have it. You want it? You can take it. We're not touching it. I think she'll turn back and look at pawn effects with that one. What? Might be a chance to study it. They say they still have a head from one of the machines. Right, at the cost of being surrounded on all sides. By... Monsters. I mean, I feel like that's our situation regardless right now. The monsters with guns. This turns back around. Wait, stop, 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 stop everyone, stop! You? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. What, you want to fight now? Because no, I called you monsters? I don't want... on, you little no, no, shit. No, no, no. <laughs> Trap up ahead. Just, uh, just go around. Watch where you're stepping. Can I look for the trap? Yeah, absolutely. Run an investigation check. Hey, dirty twenty. You're not seeing it. You have no idea what Felric is talking about. Uh, so you err on the side of caution, and you you grab like a nearby fallen branch, and you start tapping the ground uh, until there's a moment where he just gives a few inches away from your toes, um, much like the previous one. This one dug a little bit deeper with uh, um, with wooden poles. Uh, uh, sharpened on one end and stuck into the ground uh, to uh, make the fall particularly unpleasant. Um, you, yeah, if you were about to walk right into it. Uh, Belric is looking at this from like just 
he's leaning to one side just enough so that one of his eyes is visible from behind Virion's legs. Uh, he says, I've fallen into that one twice. We disarmed it every time. We <laughs> took it apart. It always comes back. Has anyone watched the area? Does it just appear, or do you not bother with that? Uh, this one? Uh, sorry, I'm not sure. I, uh, we have definitely watched over others. Uh, I was there for one of them. Never saw anything. But as soon as nobody's there, they, they, they come right back. Uh, there aren't enough of us to keep an eye on the entire area around our camp, so... If you don't mind me asking, how many are there? So there might be uh, sensitive information, so you don't need to answer. Of us? Yes. Or of them? Left me. Either, I suppose. Both. Uh, by now? Considering I just lost uh, Oruhek and Horjin, <laughs> that leaves 23. How many did you start with? Ah, uh, there's always been around 50 of us. Some would leave, so new people would show up. I think our highest was 70. Hmm. And how many of the things are out there? Well, at first we thought it was just the one. And then we killed it. Tore it to pieces. <laughs> Made sure of it. Uh, but now... <laughs> there's... All the other ones. And more like it. I honestly don't know. Dozens? No. <laughs> more. Hmm. <sighs> They might as well outnumber us at this point. Every night it feels like we're being watched. There's more pairs of eyes in the dark. I can hardly get any sleep. Can you feel it? Right now? Like we're being watched? Can we? Roll a wisdom check. All of us? Yeah. Just a, a straight wisdom check? The... Yeah, just wisdom. Uh, yeah, Tekka just swings, uh, yeah. points to one of the Ugrin, like swinging in the treetops above us. Nice. Ooh. Good job, you two. Oh, wow. Oh, those are two natural 20s. The those are mm -hmm. two natural 20s. Okay. Uh, so, uh, take a pointing at the Ugrin. Uh, Felric just, just, like, shakes his head. And uh, the rest of you, not really sure, but over the next few seconds, Varian and Pip, maybe this guy's paranoia is contagious. Because you start to feel it, this creeping sense of foreboding. Something is off. You're being watched, you're, you're certain of it. But every time you turn around, look in the uh, where where the vegetation is thicker, where you think you just heard the noise or saw something gleaming, it's it's always just out of sight. Do you get what he's saying? You feel it. And this is, of course, a very familiar sensation, right? From For last Pip? time. Pip, yeah. 
Yeah, it is. Virian? Yes? I don't think they took it out. Whatever they think they killed, that wasn't what... That wasn't what lurks in this jungle. You're right, I mean, it has something to do with it, but... I trust my gut with these things, and something out here. And everyone stay on alert, just even if the ones that we fought come back, they can. Hmm. Not to wander too far away. You all stick a little bit closer together. From this moment on. Uh, Brook, you hold onto this uh, branch you found earlier. It's one of those, like, just really nice branches, long and, um, like, thick enough that you can't really bend it. Uh, and you tap in the ground everywhere you go at this point. Might as well be extra cautious. Uh, so the only sound is just your footsteps and the tap, tap, tap of Brooks' stick uh, as he kind of takes the lead at this moment. Uh, and uh, any attempts at small talk are over at this point. Uh, every little noise around you whenever there is an animal that suddenly scuttles away from you or uh, whenever a branch happens to, to break and fall at your feet, uh, it's always met by Felric's little yelps of surprise. Um, he's trying his best to muffle them, but he uh, this is the most un on edge person you've you've ever been in uh, the company of uh, and it's really just starting to rub off on Virion and Pip. Uh, you are also starting to just feel a little jumpy uh, at everything. You're always turning your head left and right, left and right. I swear I could swear that you're seeing this glow every once in a while this pair of eyes just watching bright yellow always at the edge of your vision always out of sight as soon as you try to focus on them and uh i'm sure this doesn't help virian's paranoia at all but pip is like constantly whispering little tidbits of information <laughs> about their previous experience with creatures <laughs> like this <laughs> We you once think? stepped in the wrong place, and a tree branch swung and nearly killed Brook, chopped his head clean off. <laughs> Everywhere you look in the shadows, you see eyeballs watching you, <laughs> always watching. <laughs> I think with this, with Pip fueling the fire, I think she's going to try to sneakily give Falric uh, his ammunition back. Okay. Uh, with Pontifex behind you, I'd say that your sleight of end check would have to pass the Pontifex's uh, passive. To be to remain unseen. I'll, I'll give it a shot. Which would be a 13. Wow, yeah, comfortably so. Um, you do it so sneakily that actually even Felric wasn't quite ready for it, and you sort of like push the pouches onto his chest. Um, he lets out a small, surprised little, huh? Which, which is just yet another one of the many little yelps he has been letting out uh, this whole time. So it's not it's uh, <laughs> unusual. Yelp. Yes, the stealthy yelp. Uh, and he realizes what you've done, and he just clumsily uh, grabs them both and just stuffs them away in a, um, in like the bigger pouch where he was keeping them. Um, and he like to, to not attract any attention he's like looking away from you but he just does the most <laughs> imperceptible like nod at this. <laughs> the bro nod, yeah. <laughs> bro nod. <laughs> it feels like the entire jungle is growling. There's this constant low rumble that all of you can hear. Each of you, 
at a different moment you begin to hear it, but once you do, it never goes away. Constant, low rumble, as if the ground was shaking and ready to open up under your feet at any moment. Somewhere beyond the leaves above your head, um, you can't really see the sky because of how thick the canopy of leaves is, just the occasional glimpse of, uh, of the blue above you, but uh, what, what little light you're getting, it's beginning to go away. You figure the weather above you that the sky must be getting clouded because uh, it shouldn't be nighttime yet, but it's beginning to feel like it is, and it's just getting a lot harder to see where you're stepping, and now all of you the slightest movement anywhere in your peripheral vision, it just always feels like it's magnified. And then, Rook. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. it is a 23 to hit you. It does hit. There is this just very slight, uh, um, almost whistle like noise just and then you hear the and you feel the pain in your foot um looking down at this glistening uh arrow um that has managed to strike uh, to strike uh, and and go through your boot and uh, it's not a particularly nasty injury and you're not like pinned to the ground or anything um nope oh, i messed up uh, uh, that's well it's 15 points of piercing damage. Um, and for the slightest moment, you almost think maybe you, maybe you imagined it. It almost feels surreal. Uh, but then everything falls into place. This paranoia that has been building up this whole time, it feels like, no, that's it. This is real. This is actually happening. Um, everybody just clumsily comes to a stop. You almost like fall onto one another from like how sudden um, you, you all pause and, and you look around and there is... A pair of eyes, golden. Uh, they're off in a distance through the um, through the vegetation, but they're so bright that it feels like you should have seen them from farther away, and yet somehow you missed them. And for the first time, you make eye contact, and uh, um, Thelric just holds up a hand, trembling, pointing up ahead, and he says, ah, ah, it's him! The fangs of nightfall! He's here! Ah, oh, we're all gonna die! That's where we'll end the session. <laughs> the fangs of nightfall? Ah, my foot! Ah, <laughs> 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 <sighs> okay. Cool. Didn't want to go on for too long today, because we're all tired. You did it. You made it through it. We made it. Yeah, we it. How is the ninth looking for all you lovely folk? Should be Should good. Should be good. Yeah. Huh? I huh? have no guarantee for that yet. Ah. Eh. Do but I have I permission to just turn you into a pin cushion? Just keep shooting arrows at you? <laughs> sure. Okay. Yay. <laughs> I think I didn't hear from Matt. Maybe? Oh, yeah. I'll be here. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Um, well, then, I hope to see you all next week, or I hope to see you most of you next week. Uh, we'll proceed with a session if we're missing just one person. But yeah, for the time being, I'm just going to pack this up. And, uh, uh, yeah. Cool. I will let you go. Wow. Loop. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a good one.